Recently in Nevada, the state Republican Party decided to remove its anti-abortion and anti-gay language from the party platform, and they're doing this because they see the writing on the wall. And I should say I do give them credit for that because they're one of the first, you know, first state parties to take this step. But they've realized we're not going to win on these issues, so let's go ahead and be bigger people and say, we concede, we 100% lose on social issues, let's move along. Well, State Assemblyman Ira Hansen, a high-profile Republican from Nevada, went on the Janet Mefford radio show to talk about this and listen to his hilarious solution. Me, I've been involved in the Republican Party uh, virtually since I was 18, going back to the Reagan era. Yeah. But, but, I, but I probably today in, in, in Nevada, you still see a big, strong element going back to the Pat Robertson campaign in 1988. And that was when there was a huge fight here in Nevada between the, the Rockefeller wing of the party, as I call them, and the Pat Robertson wing. And with time, the, the, the Robertson wing uh, won, and you had these sorts of social issues openly adopted by the Republican Party. And by the way, in the 90s and, and 2000s, the Republican Party actually did very, very well in Nevada with those in the platform. We don't see that younger uh, recruitment into the party. I think they're actually being alienated partially because of this absence of values. Yeah. Do you get what he just said there? He said, to get young votes, embrace the Pat Robertson wing of the Republican Party. Embrace the values wing of the Republican Party. <laughs> oh, that's rich. Oh, that's rich. Yeah, please do that. Please do that. And then sit back and watch the Democrats win every single fucking election imaginable. That is the exact wrong approach if you want to win elections. Just look at the polls, dippity. I mean, re uh, religiosity in millennials is just plummeting. You know, like, even if people, like, they might say, well, whatever, um, I believe in God. But there are more, so many more deists today, so many more, like, universalists, like the New Age beliefs of, like, I'm spiritual, but then they can't define it, and they don't even really know what the fuck it means. So many more agnostics and atheists and secularists. Religion is just rapidly on the decline. What they do say for sure is, I'm not part of an organized religion, fuck that. Why? Because we grew up and we see, oh, look at that, the Catholics were boinking little boys and then shuffling priests from parish to parish to cover it up. Yeah, that appears to be a problem. I don't want to be in that club. You know, you look at uh, Islam around the world and we all know what kind of picture is painted of Islam in America. I mean, you look at any religion and you're like, that seems a little goofy. How many arms does, that, does the Hindu god have? Really? Uh, you're worshipping different animals, too? Uh, what exactly is going on here? The cow is sacred? I just had a burger. It was delicious. Uh, the m millennials look at all religion. They're like, oh, whoa, whoa. Hold the phone here. You said what? You got to realize, our generation, when somebody says some shit, we can fact check it in real time. I get it. If you grew up in 1956, you couldn't just say, look at the fucking Jeffrey's lying again, man. Let's go to the library and search for three and a half hours and find why he's wrong and explain it to him. Somebody break out the nine trillion page encyclopedia and we'll get on fact checking it. You couldn't do that back in the day. Nowadays, you're having a debate with your buddy. Somebody whips out their smartphone and Google's in. Three seconds later, you go, oh, okay, Tim is a douche. He was wrong. So we're the fact-checking generation. We, we can figure shit out. So when you tell us, oh, yeah, no, obviously, the way that the, what happened is that Jesus died, and then he came back to life, and he's three people, but he's really one person, but he's also three people, and then there was the resurrection, and then there was the talking snake and the burning bush, and Noah, the guy with the boat and the animals, and then everybody died, and the world's 6,000 years old. Don't listen to the scientists. 4.54 billion is really long. It's only 6,000. Anyway, uh, yeah. So we look at that and we go, whoa, man, you're fucking silly. You're a silly person. You're a silly person. But this guy's solution is just to get young voters, just embrace Pat Robertson. Because nobody's cooler than a guy on ABC Family and the Christian Broadcasting Network who's about 193 years old, who's probably popping his daily Vicodins and blood thinners and they prop him up with a dick before he gets out there and they put 46 pounds of makeup on his face so he doesn't look like a rotting corpse in real time. He can't even form a coherent sentence anymore because he's been on TV since 1927. 
Like, this is the guy who you want to put forward? The guy who's... There's nobody more viciously anti-gay than Pat Robertson. There's nobody more openly sexist than Pat Robertson who blamed every problem ever whenever there's a relationship question on his show on the woman. Uh, on women. He blames it on women. This is this is who you want to put up? As, as the person to get millennials? Please, go right ahead.